Today's Hideaway tidbit is about the Gullah Geechee culture here in Georgia and my collection of sweetgrass baskets. Today's tidbit is brought to you by our corporate members, Francis Johnson and Southeast Georgia Rentals. These two local businesses are owned by my friends, attorney Francis Johnson and Linda Hebe, the wife of our society's devoted board member and treasurer. Dr. Julian Quattlebaum was a great friend of my daddy's. He gave him a book in 1976 entitled, My Friend, the Gullah. On the book jacket, Dr. Quattlebaum says, and I quote, Gullah is the Negro dialect spoken by the descendants of ex-slaves in the coastal region from Georgetown, South Carolina to the Georgia-Florida line. It represents a linguistic link between America, the West Antilles, and Africa. He says the branches of the family tree are Gullah. The, uh, the trunk is West Indian and the roots are English. This is the best description that I've ever heard or read of our Gullah Geechee. To expand on this further, Gullah has come to be the accepted name of the islanders in South Carolina, while Geechee refers to those islanders in Georgia. When Oglethorpe settled Georgia, there were anti-slavery laws. Unfortunately, these were lifted in 1750 and slavery began along the shores of Georgia as the main source of labor. Rice plantations flourished in this climate. Many cultural and linguistic similarities exist among the descendants of these slaves and those African peoples in Angola in West Africa. Over the ensuing centuries, the isolation of these rice-growing ethnic groups who recreated their native cultures on the Georgia Sea Islands led to the formation of an identity recognized as the Gullah Geechee. The enslaved men and women from West Africa brought with them the knowledge of how to make tools needed for rice harvesting, including fanner baskets for winnowing, the process of tossing hulls into the air to separate the shaft from the rice. The sweet grass baskets found on coastal islands are made in the same style as baskets found in the rice culture of West Africa. Sweet grass baskets are also used for carrying laundry, food, and wood. This talent begins with how to select palmetto, sweet grass, and pine straw. Baskets made today are mainly used as decorative art pieces. I have several large and small pieces and I just adore this collection. I have bought these at the market in Charleston, on back roads in Mount Pleasant, South Carolina, and from Cornelia Bailey on Sapelo Island. The early baskets were made from bulrush, a tougher plant, well suited for heavy yeast. It wasn't until the early 1900s that artists began to use other plant materials, most notably the sweet grass. This allowed for more sophisticated designs like loops. The Gullah Geechee artists do not use typical weaving techniques like plaiting or twisting. Instead, they use the West African tradition of coiling. Dwight street grass is bundled together and coiled in circles. Thin strands of palmetto fronds hold the piece in place. Basket makers use either a sewing bone or a nail bone. A sewing bone is a sharpened metal spoon. A nail bone comes from the rib bone of a cow or a pig. Religious meetings in praise houses were the spiritual outlet for the Gullah Geechee ancestors. Fast-paced, rhythmic hand clapping accompanied the ring shout songs, while the congregants moved counterclockwise in a circle, making sure to never cross their feet. The word shout 
is thought to be derived from Sout, S-A-U-T, a West African word of Arabic origin that tells of an Islamic religious dance that is performed to total exhaustion. Many original Gullah Geechee were Islam followers. We are trying to secure the McIntosh County Shouters as our 2021 Averett Lecture presenters. I just can't wait. Until next week, bye.